hi guys welcome back to our channel so today is the season finale of cloak and dagger um there was a lot of good stuff going on so we're gonna dive right into it as usual um if you are new to this channel please go ahead and hit that subscribe button and also hit that bell for notifications so that you know every time we do a new video So, we're finally here. We're finally at the season finale of Cloak and Dagger. Yeah. Um, it feels like, a, I, I know it's only been 10 episodes, but I felt like the way the season was progressing, it was progressing at a good pace to where, like, when I found out there was only 10 episodes, I wasn't, like, bummed out about the season finale. And I was actually pretty excited about it all day, kind of just waiting to kind of yes, see was. <laughs> just what was going to kind of happen and, and really, like, how they were going to put a bow on this season um and so for me I, I do i think they did a really really good job with everything um there were a couple of times where i was just like eh, i feel like they kind of rushed things mm -hmm. but for the most part i think the season like wrapped up really really well what about you i mean yeah i'm kind of like you there was a couple of parts where i was just like it was kind of rushed it was good it wasn't like it was a bad season finale but i don't know i didn't expect any of it to be rushed or feel rushed because of the way that they progressed the season yeah so that was the only little disappointing part was that i feel like they didn't completely wrap the bow but it was good it was really good and i think we got everything that we expected to get so yeah i mean i feel like they put a perfect bow on it i just think that um for example um a lot of this episode is kind of picking it where we left off so tandy's um you know, in the middle of her little um, standoff with the assassin from Roxxon Corp, um, Tyrone's basically on the run from the New Orleans police because he's being framed um, right. for murder. So we pick up right where we left off, which was great. Right. I think where we ended up, um, there were times, I don't even want to say rushed, I just think it was like a little choppy at times of like how we got to where we got to. Um, what I mean by that is I'll speak more so from I think it's more so from Tyrone's perspective is that it, it felt a little awkward. Yeah. Um, awkward is a better word. Yeah, yeah. Awkward. Because, um, like I said, we pick up with Tyrone where he's on the run from the police, mm -hmm. um, which was fine. I enjoyed, you know, that portion of the of this um, of this episode, um, especially the conversation that he has with his dad, um, which I know we were both kind of shocked at like, <laughs> what his dad says to him. Right. But I thought it was so appropriate because of their personal view of or their personal understanding of the police department in New Orleans, which is there's no way you're getting proven innocent. There's nothing that that his family could do, or at least that they feel like they can do. There's nothing that Tyrone can do. There's nothing that the police department is going to do or nobody that was bold enough to stand up and, and, and speak on his behalf. Right. Um, so I feel like that conversation was very honest and upfront. Um, I think it's everything that happens after that conversation that it starts to feel kind of weird. Mm -hmm. um, and essentially what, you know, with Tyrone getting, uh, basically getting caught, getting a quote unquote arrested or, you know, basically being led to the, to the ex executioner block, you know, it just felt odd. Like I just, I guess I just wasn't expecting that. Right. Um, I didn't expect him and Detective O'Reilly to end up in that situation. And the whole time yeah. this is happening, I mean, Tandy's going through her own situation as well. And I think I was so caught up into, okay, Tyrone's clearly going to save her. When is he going to save her and how is he going to save yeah. her? Um, so I think that made it, maybe that's just my own perspective. Of like I was so, in, like I was anticipating him saving Tandy so bad that I couldn't really. <clears throat> you couldn't focus on the rest of it. I couldn't focus on what he was going to really appreciate <laughs> that whole sequence. I don't know. I knew he was going to rescue her, but that wasn't my focus, I guess. So it didn't bother me as much. Right. It was just, I didn't think that he was going to get caught when he did. Yeah. So I guess I was like caught off guard, which I mean, it's good. I mean, at least I can't. Yeah, it kept it, it kept you like on the edge of your seat. Yeah. It didn't feel like overly, like we said, we both knew that he was clearly going to either save Tandy or I even thought there was possibly maybe Tandy saves him right um so it was clear like yeah we both i think we both kind of had that feeling like okay 
one of them is going to save the other. It's just a matter of how how is it going to happen and how cool is it going to be yeah. when they save one another. Right. Um, and like we said, we eventually, you know, with the season, like the way the episode plays out is that Tyrone does save Tandy. Mm-hmm. And I think that was really cool because so far the season has always panned out in a way that it's almost like Tandy is Tyrone's anchor. So whenever things get too hairy for either Tandy or for himself, he immediately shows up to where Tandy is. And it's right. like, it, it levels him. It gets him grounded again. Yeah. Um, so I really enjoyed just that whole sequence. And the 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 destruction of the co- cloak, but at the same time, like this, this newfound confidence, I think that Tyrone is kind of, discovering in himself as this, as the episode kind of started closing you know closing out yeah i didn't really expect the cloak to get destroyed that was really sad <laughs> i was i didn't expect it but i'm kind of glad it did well i mean but he just has another one now it's the hoodie so i mean right. he still has one and i but i think the hoodie is more um i guess more appropriate yeah for, it's more appropriate for the this type of show because mm-hmm. He can't go around with that bling bling cloak the Thank whole you. time. So and not be yeah. recognized. Yeah. So yeah. Um so with so that's that's a little bit of Tyrone out. There's some other stuff I want to get back to with Tyrone later, but I want to touch on Tandy for a little bit because Tandy has an awesome bounce back. I think we were both I don't want to say we were hard on her, we were just very realistic with where she was last episode. Mm-hmm. And she has a very strong bounce back to the person that she was starting to become in the first place which the is one this, we like yes. yeah which is this person that is fueled by hope and understands that <clears throat> good things can happen if you work towards them right um and we see that both by obviously her saving her saving her mom mm-hmm. and her saving mina or at least trying to save trying mina. to and even at the end of her saving, saving tyrone, tyrone. Or, i mean or at least making him aware that you're not alone and that you're not doing this by yourself yeah actually even before she saves him that time she even helps him out by under like helping him understand that that cloak isn't him right and that his negative form of thinking is also not him right um which is really cool because she i feel like she echoes a lot of what tyrone's mom said in the previous episode where they were having that conversation and she she started pointing out to him how he's not just all negativity and fear and gloom that he's there's more to him than that and i thought that kind of stood out because you know i think as people we tend to like or even as kids you know as teenagers we tend to like not put a lot of weight and stock into what our parents say but we put but if like somebody that is close to us close to our heart or a friend or somebody that we're in a relationship with says something along those lines it kind of carries a little bit more weight yeah, so i thought that was really really cool on tandy's part of just you know showing that basically like her ability to have that type of bounce back to that type of person and being the type of person that provides you know hope for them both you know mm-hmm. even when things aren't looking um looking the best um is there anything that stood out to you from tandy's perspective or at least on her end no i'm episode? just happy that she you know got some sense back into her yeah <laughs> um obviously the other big thing we have to touch on in this episode so if we finally get to see um i'm gonna i'm gonna just call it tandy versus veda part two <laughs> i mean it really wasn't a showdown though. it wasn't like, a showdown but i mean i don't know maybe <laughs> i'm reading into it but like doesn't she seem threatened like no she seems threatened no she, she doesn't seem threatened at all she i feel like she is because i would know i'm a female so i would that, see if another female is threatened like i no. feel like i would recognize those signs i don't know i just i don't it's weird because even though yvetta knows that there's always been divine pairings and even as her aunt is explaining which is another part of this episode is her aunt explaining each example of this divine pairing and how one had to die for the other um one you clearly get this undertone that yvetta was like if anybody's gonna die here it better be her yeah, but I mean, that was what I got. Yeah. But two, it's just from this understanding that his divine pairing is another female who is the same age as him. Like, all the other divine pairings were like, um, like the first divine pairing were like two kids. Um, the second one were like brothers who were feuding. Like, there, were ne- there was never really any real romantic interest except for one. 
Mm -hmm. um, so does, this, yeah. yeah. So this is the first one where it's two people of the opposite sex and they're the divine pairing. And I think when you're that type of person, I think like Yvette is where she believes in divine pairing. She believes in destiny. She believes in these types of things. I do think it could be a thing of where it's like, how destined are they to be together? You know what I'm saying? Where it could be like in the back. I feel like that's something that's kind of going on know. in the back of her head. I don't, I didn't get that vibe, but that's just me. I just think she was concerned that he was going to die. That's all that I got from her was that she was really concerned that he was going to die. I don't just because, and I say that because of how like dismissive she was of Tandy. Like, I feel like she was being very dismissive. Well, wouldn't you if he, if, if you found this thank girl you. in your head, though? Okay, but thank you, though. It proves that she's a threat of some sort. Even if it's not necessarily to her relationship, it's okay, still this well, understanding okay, that, Okay, I get like, that. Yeah, no, I don't think she's thinks that she's a threat to her relationship. But the fact, yeah, that she was in her head, I mean, I wouldn't. I just think, like. I wouldn't like her too much either. I don't know. It It comes off as a little bit of jealousy. Even from like the first time that she showed up where she was like, uh, excuse me, little girl. Like, not understanding that like, yeah, that's his partner for life. Obviously, like we as people who know the comic book history, like that's his partner for life. Like one way or the other. Um, so yeah, so we obviously get that. The, the next person I think we have to touch on is Detective O'Reilly. Um, and it's clear that they clearly set up her for to become Mayhem um in season two and we clearly get to see how she becomes mayhem it's very different um or it's somewhat different than from how it happened in the comics where um dagger more so um is the cause of her becoming mayhem this one it's more so um a mix of um the terror gas or whatever and um detective connor's kind of shooting her and basically we're going to probably see in season two how that slowly starts to progress her towards being mayhem you know what that reminded me of how they were um how she was moving through um on the camera it reminded me of um you know in team wolf those um those doctors the yeah. dread doctors <laughs> that's what that reminded me of it was really creepy <laughs> no but i think and i honestly i do think that kind of lends itself to my theory that even if she's not like the full-blown villain see mm -hmm. in season two um for those of you who have maybe seen season two of daredevil like being a similar role as Punisher was in, in Daredevil season two, where he wasn't the main villain, but he was in opposition to Daredevil, where the you know Detective O'Reilly could technically be in opposition to Cloak and Dagger, mm -hmm. maybe not the necessarily like the all-out villain, but she's just in opposition because maybe mm -hmm. she's going to go about this way of cleaning up the New Orleans the uh, police department in a very aggressive vigilante type of way. Mm -hmm. um, the final thing is that I want to touch on is going back to Tyrone is we finally get to see the second level of or the second iteration or third iteration, I guess you could say, of Tyrone's powers, which is when Tyrone wow. absorbs Connors into himself. Um, that, that is a crazy. huge that is a huge part of Tyrone's powers. That's a huge uh, power. I didn't know that he could do that. Yeah, so that's, that's a that's huge crazy. part of his character. Now, I'm interested in seeing in season two how much they explore that and how much um it's it, it ties into how it was in the comics because in the comics tyrone's ability to absorb things and have like this second dimension inside of him mm -hmm. is part of his part of his abilities you know it's part of him being able like it's one of his you know abilities to be able to one save people teleport um and things like that but there's also a darker side to that power where there is an evil being living in that dimension and it starts oh. to kind of take over Tyrone. Oh, snap. <laughs> and, and, and causes Tyrone to basically abuse his power, abuse that ability to absorb things. That's so creepy. I'm really looking forward to seeing that whole thing unfold in season two because yeah. I think, once again, it's just another level because now that Tyrone's on his own, now that he could possibly feel like he doesn't have a support system, it could open up this door for this darkness inside of him to really yeah. start to eat at him. And I really do like how they kind of like, in a way, flip the roles um, at the end of the season where now Tyrone is the one yeah, on the run crazy. and by himself and Tandy's going back to her family. Yeah. Um, so that in itself is pretty much the, the final season, uh, the final episode of, of the first season of Cloak and Dagger. 
Um, we are going to do another video where we kind of just summarize the entire uh, season, yes. give you guys our thoughts on just the entirety of, of the, the entire show. Um, and we also have a couple of other cool things in store for you guys um, in the next couple weeks. But like always, please be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Um, you guys did an awesome job. I enjoyed having so many cool conversations with you guys this past week in comments. You just sounded like a teacher right then. You guys did a great job. <laughs> I mean, it was like I had, I, I really no, do. we we really like the comments and we're really happy with all the engagement. We like seeing what you guys think and you guys, even the conversations amongst yourselves. It's really interesting for us to read through. Yeah. So, so you know, to our new subscribers, to our longtime subscribers, thank you guys oh, so much. Geez. Yeah. Thank you guys <laughs> so much for supporting us. Um, keep doing what you're doing and we will continue providing you guys with, you know, great things to talk about. So until next time, see you guys later. Bye.